Welcome, in front of me is a Honor 9X and today I'll show you a couple tweaks and tricks that I can do on this device. So we're going to begin with the one that I personally really like which is the dark mode and usually you can find it in the notification panel but it looks like it's not here. So you can either add it from here by simply holding this and dragging it over or you can also find it in the settings. Now once you add it you can then tap on it from here, like I said and there we go. So that will go to dark mode and that also includes default apps like dialer, messages, uh, browser. As you can see, everything is now in the dark mode. Or you can also do it through the settings, uh, going back to enabling it. So it's under the display and right here, as you can see. So that is the first one. Now moving on, we're going to go into the gestures. So as you can see right now, we have the typical buttons on the, on the device and well, they're a little bit outdated. They also kind of take a little bit of space on your display and make it look a little well, less clean, I would say. Now, I'm personally a fan of a minimalistic look. So gestures are one of my all-time top favorite things that I can do on, uh, well, when, in terms of enabling something on the device. Now, to enable them, let's go to system. And from here, system navigation. And you will find it at the top, gestures. Stop on start and it will give us a tutorial on how to use them. So slide from either side to go back, like so, and slide up from the bottom quickly to go home, and swipe and hold to go to recent. Now, as you can see, I have to swipe up a couple times uh, from time to time. Now, this is more due to the fact that the device is on a stand and the lip is stopping me from going straight from the bottom of the display. That is how you would want to uh, use them. So when you're holding it, you'd swipe from basically here. And as you can see now, it works fine. Uh, so that's basically as accurate as you can get as long as you're sliding from the bottom of the display. Here I'm being kind of stopped and it doesn't always catch on to the fact that I'm trying to uh, go home and it will just think that I'm trying to press the bottom of the device uh, display But other than that in my opinion it works really well and the gestures itself are really well designed uh, I personally am really a fan of the uh, side buttons uh, the back on the side it feels just good to swipe from the side honestly then moving on, we're going to go into the split screen option, which allows you to just multitask with two different apps. Now, personally, I feel like the YouTube is probably the best app to do it with. So usually you listen to something on YouTube. And if you don't, if you don't like to pay for a subscription like me, uh, but you still want to listen to something while not being forced to use just that single app, uh, all you need to do is open well, for here. Let's open up YouTube first and then with three fingers, slide up and there we go. It opens it up in split screen. Now, as you can see, it opens it up in a weird way at the moment, but what you can do is go home. There we go. And once you go, well, go home, it opens up your home screen while keeping the YouTube open. Now, if something was playing on there, it would still be playing. It wouldn't stop even though you're on home screen. And from here, we can tap on an additional app that we want to split screen with. And let me just mute the sound. Um, let's open something that doesn't uh, look like uh, cringe fest, uh, which uh, it looks like there's nothing like that, whatever. Um, so as you can see, you can from here also resize it. So it takes the minimal amount of the device. And you will see right now that the, that the video is playing while I'm using the uh, Google browser and when you when you want to quit this if you go home right now It will keep the video playing even though it's gonna minimize it as you can see you can still see it playing on the top So if you want to close it, you could either slide it Oops. All right. You can slide it to full screen and now let's close it like there we go. Like I said, and there are some problems with the, or I have with the home button when it comes down to the stand. And the last thing, or well, not the last thing, 
second last uh, would be the uh, screen resolution. So the device comes with a uh, full HD display, but if you want to save a little bit on the battery, now keep in mind this won't be a lot, but if you're struggling, for instance, with a uh, with with your battery, you could go under the display and brightness, and and here we have the screen resolution, and the, by the default it set to smart so you would want to disable this and you could force it to either be on hd which is a 720p uh, or if you want to always have a full hd dis display and you don't really care about the battery you could set it to be permanently on full hd uh, and in this case on full hd things will look a little bit sharper than on uh, just an hd uh, in certain cases which i have found out or at least with my device um it's uh, things like Google Books, I think it's called, uh, the Google equivalent for reading books. Um, sometimes it works, works weirdly when you're changing the resolution. So on a higher resolution, like for instance right now, the text will look uh, normal. But when you go to a lower resolution like 720p, uh, the text will be enlarged. Uh, so it, it will take well, way more space for just a single sentence than it did previously as an example, which if that is the case, just try to, for instance, change it back to 1080p if you're bothered by the font of it. I haven't really found a way to change it. But this is, I think, the only place where I found this having such an effect. Now let's go home. And the last thing that I wanted to show is the um, sharing basically a password, Wi-Fi password. Now, let me quickly enable a Wi-Fi right now on my device and from here so if we go to Wi-Fi and you have on my Wi-Fi right here let's just connect to it like so there we go so once you are connected to Wi-Fi and you want to share it with someone what you can do is tap on it and this will make you the QR code for scanning. And as you can see, there's no info about the password um, of the well, password of, of that Wi-Fi, uh, but it's basically embedded in this little square right here. And they, the way you would go about retrieving that is you on your phone, open up camera, tap on the AI or well, this button right there, and it opens up the QR scanner and all you do is just slide over it and you can see that it allows me to connect to this Wi-Fi. Uh, I don't have to put in any password or anything. Now if you're wondering how to do it right here, I believe it should be the same way. So when you open up camera you have this button right over here as you can see. You tap on it and just agree to this and allow. Allow and get started. So once you're in the app, it starts off by going into the shopping app. Uh, so it scans whatever it sees and basically based on colors, uh, it tries to find a similar uh, image. But we're interested in the first option right here. If this would actually disappear, it would be splendid. There we go. So the first option, code scanner, and it opens up the QR scanner, which from there, all you need to do is find some kind of QR code and simply scan it and it will do whatever the QR code tells it to do. So in terms of like we just seen the Wi-Fi, when you tap on it, it will just automatically gain the password of it and allow you allow you to connect to it without basically putting any kind of password or anything. You just select on the bottom connect and you're in the Wi-Fi. So it's a good way to share your password with someone or well share your Wi-Fi without sharing actual password. And yeah, so this would conclude all the tweaks and tricks that I want to share. If you found this very helpful, don't forget to hit like, subscribe, and thanks for watching.